Hello everyone, welcome to the second AIA Live event. We are 18 months into the pandemic and despite these challenging times, it is with great hope that this half day event will provide a fresh perspective on finding purpose while maintaining our physical and mental well-being. My name is Dr. Miralini, AIA Group Medical Director, and it gives me great pleasure to be moderating the AIA Live segment on supporting mental wellness for our children during this pandemic. AIA's commitment to creating healthier communities is reinforced by our, by our brand purpose, which is to help millions of people live healthier, longer, better lives. A key component of this is mental well-being. Life has been especially challenging with the pandemic and people are experiencing unprecedented additional pressure, especially mentally. For our young people, this could be significant, but there are ways to help them cope and learn mechanisms such as mindfulness. What I'd like to do today is to have a conversation with Dr. Scott Collins and Ms. Venus Yu with the hope of sharing ways for parents, children, and friends to cope better in these difficult times. Scott and Venus, hello, and a warm welcome to the AIA Live event. Let me just take a couple of minutes to introduce the both of you. Dr. Scott Collins is the Chief Medical Officer at Holmark, AIA's strategic partner for mental well-being. Um, Dr. Scott is cur currently an adjunct professor at the Duke University, North Carolina, based in the United States, and his passion has uh, been in child psychology with a keen focus on attention disorders. He is a big advocate for the use of digital tools, and his focus at Holmas remains on generating meaningful evidence and contributing to preventative care in mental well-being. Ms. Venus Yu is an experienced clinical psychologist based out of Hong Kong, having worked in public hospitals for many years, focusing on child mental health before switching to the private health space. Her focus and specialty lies in mindfulness and how it can help parenting more effectively and children's mental health. Welcome, both of you. Let me start with you, Scott. As the Chief Medical Advisor, Officer for Holmas, tell us a little about your role and its focus and how you came to it with your background and expertise in psychology. Yeah, well, thank you very much. It is, uh, it, it's really a pleasure and fun to be here, um, uh, Dr. Myra. And, and um, yeah, I would love to tell you a little bit about the, my, my background and, and how I got involved in Holmas. As you mentioned, uh, I'm an adjunct faculty at Duke uh, prior to joining Holmas just a few months ago. Uh, I spent almost 20 years as a, as a full-time faculty member uh, working there, as you mentioned, working with uh, primarily with kids and adults with ADHD and related difficulties. Um, I started getting really, really interested in the application of data science. How can we use big data to solve challenging problems in mental health, not just focused on kids, but families and, and uh, adults as well. Uh, and I was also doing a lot of work in digital health and, and thinking about innovative tools that could be used to either assess or treat problems, not just for ADHD, but for other psychiatric problems. And the opportunity at Holmas came, came uh, to me uh, to, to really combine these passions. And, and what we're doing at Holmas, as you mentioned, uh, very, very, very small ambition is to take evidence and transform the way that we think about and deliver mental health care, as well as promote mental well-being. Um, so my, uh, my responsibilities are, are pretty broad, and we're a small company, so they're, they're flexible and, and, and change. But in general, I oversee sort of our, our, the, the, the clinical aspects of the tools that we're building, including you know, mental well-being solutions that we're in partnership with AIA working on, as well as some of our other um, evidence generation strategies for using real-world uh, data and real-world evidence to, uh, from electronic health record data and other sources to solve problems, again, focused on mental, mental health. We have a, a, a profound crisis globally in terms of the, the impact of, of mental health and mental well-being challenges. 
uh, and and uh, taking novel and innovative approaches to try to solve that. And I'm particularly excited about that for, for what we're doing, not only as a company, but but also with strategic partners like AIA and other groups that we're working with that are really starting to take this problem seriously. So I'm I'm excited to be here to talk with you and with Venus about sort of how, how we're thinking about um, mental health and mental well-being in a time of COVID. So yeah, thank you very much for having me. Brilliant, Scott. So with this pandemic and so many people being in lockdown and children especially resorting to online schooling, can you share with me what impact must this have on young minds? Unfortunately, I think we're we're only at the at the beginning of really starting to understand what the ultimate impact is going to be. And I've been following the literature for the past eighteen months and the and the science that's coming out. There was just a just a report out uh, late last week in in JAMA, uh, the Journal of the American Medical Association here in the U.S. That was a a meta-analysis, meaning it was a, is a, a collection of, of studies that had been conducted since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and what they found was one in five children, so 20% of children across the world, uh, were experiencing clinically significant levels of anxiety. And one in four, 25% of children, were experiencing clinical levels of depression. Uh, so that, and that, that's clinical levels. That's, you know, that, those are kids that would need to see a specialist to really start to address. And that doesn't even you know, address, and I'm sure the numbers are much bigger, like an iceberg of kids that are experiencing subclinical challenges that are impacting their day-to-day -day functioning. Dr. Scott mentioned about um, increasing mental health issues uh, preference. Even in my like a private clinic, I saw more and more kids are uh, getting more stressed and with very stressful parents as well, all the lockdown. Without all the outdoor activity, exercise, and the social gathering, their mental health are at great risk. So in the clinical setting, and actually I actually encounter what Dr. Scott mentioned about the increasing preference rate about the mental health issues in the kids and the adolescents. What impact on mental health are we seeing on the pandemic in families with children in Asia particularly? And I know you're based in Hong Kong, and I know that the living structures and family structures in, in Hong Kong are, are, are quite restrictive and are specifically different. So if you could share with us, what are some of the coping mechanisms we can help our children with particularly? Yeah, I think in Asia, specifically in Hong Kong, because the space is quite small, like in a family, uh, they will have a like, very small house, not like as big as those in the US or in Australia. So in the pandemic, the the parents, they have to, many of them have to be work at home, right? And the, the kids have to be uh, studying at home. So it's locked down in a very uh, small space. And then usually conflicts arise in like very little space. So I think um, having a um, routine is very important at home during the pandemic time. Especially, I think it's good to have some fun games or fun uh, like um, exercise. I think those are very important coping strategies in the pandemic, especially in the, I think the Hong Kong or, or Asia uh, in the small space environment, they need that space in their heart. Despite the space here, physically is small. <laughs> yeah. If I hear you right, it's having some structure to give some purpose to these kids as well as you know, parents and kids coming together to have some sort of a family time despite those crazy schedules, you know, making do with whatever spaces and whatever time that you know, we can get our hands on. With so much online uh, learning Venus happening, is there a positive role that digital and social platforms can play in supporting our youth during these challenging times? Yes, because I see the kids, uh, they are quite sad during the pandemic time. At the first time, they will miss school. <laughs> Actually, in the past, the kids usually told me they don't want to go to school. But now, I actually, in the last two years, I've seen kids, adolescents or even primary school kids, they tell me they miss school. So they miss the friends, miss the teacher, they even miss the teaching. So I think social media could be a way for the 
the kids to uh, get along with each other. For example, sometimes I, I would just um, invite the kids to form like a show talk gathering. For example, uh, they do a lot of online board games, not just playing video games, uh, like board games. Uh, they, they play different roles. They have social interactions. Even during the online gathering, they, they share some kind of like fun and also support and build up some connection between themselves. I guess what the pandemic has really taught us is we, we just can't undermine the strength of face-to-face -face interactions. But as parents, you know, we've, we've got to be creative in, in how we continue to engage the youth and our children. Coming back to you, Scott, um, what impact are we seeing directly on our youth? And why might their coping mechanisms be more fragile than those of us adults? It's unquestionable, as we've already discussed, that we're seeing increases and, and we're seeing impacts on youth in terms of their, their anxiety, their challenges with mood, um, lots of, you know, below the, below the clinical threshold of challenges that, that we need to face. I think that um, part of the reason that it might be so disruptive for kids is that uh, they, they don't, um, you know, their, their perspective on the world and on life is, is much shorter and smaller than us as adults. All of us as adults have had to switch what we do and we have our Zoom meetings now and we sit in our, uh, our offices at home or our bedrooms or, or other places. Um, and we sort of adapt to that because, you know, for a year, a year for us is, you know, one twentieth or one thirtieth of our working career. A year for our kids is one tenth or, you know, one sixth of what their lives are. So I think that impact, that being said, um, we also know, I mean, kids are really resilient. And the, the, this is one of the things that gives me some optimism and hope is that I remember my, my son uh, had his 10th birthday in April of 2020. So right after everything had changed and we had a Zoom birthday party where they got together, it, well, it, wasn't, it was some other platform where they could do video games together, play games. And it was great. It was actually, you know, it was, it was something different and, and they enjoyed that. <clears throat> and I also think that kids are gonna, um, you know, this generation of children that are experiencing the pandemic, uh, they're going to, uh, they will, once we get through this and things change as a whole, uh, I think, I, I don't want to say they're going to be fine because we're going to be measuring longer term effects. But, but I think as we're conscious of that, I think that we, we um, you know, we can rely on this resilience and the fact that, uh, you know, kids can get through things and they can get through a lot of adversity um, yeah, with, with a lot of the things that Dr. Venus mentioned and just being creative and adaptable. I'm just going to shift gears a little, little bit. And I know, uh, you know, this topic is, is very close to your heart, heart particularly you, Scott. Uh, what about young families, particularly uh, with children of special needs? Uh, you're a parent. Venus is a parent. I'm a parent, too. And uh, I know you've done quite a lot of work on attention disorders. Would you be open to sharing your personal story here oh, and yeah. how you've managed and coped with it? My older, uh, I have two children and my older one, who's 11 now, uh, has both uh, ADHD and he's also on the autism spectrum. Um, for, you know, he's, a, he's a high functioning, smart, you know, awesome kid, uh, but it brings some unique challenges in terms of how we've had to adapt during the pandemic. One of the things that uh, we noticed early, which was a, a, a very pleasant surprise when we shifted to everything online, but my son uh, thrived and being and, and talking to his teachers, uh, they said he is he's more engaged. We noticed this at home that uh, it, and I started you know talking to him and thinking about it. You know, you go to school and it's an overwhelming you know for for a child, especially a child on the spectrum. It's overwhelming. You have to think about, all right, who am I going to sit with at lunch? Who am I going to play with at recess? And, and everything is sort of uh, in your face, so to speak. At home, it could break it up into blocks. Okay, I can focus for my for my class. I can, uh, you know, I can have lunch by myself and move around and <laughs> do the things that I would that normally are not, you know, as as uh, uh, encouraged at school. Um, so, so that, uh, that was a nice surprise. However, as the pandemic went on and later in the spring, um, we saw that sort of fade and he sort of got, and this is where the ADHD started to play a role is mm -hmm. he 
you figured out, oh, I can I can have my camera on in my Zoom class and have this window open up here where I'm watching YouTube videos. And that became it became a significant problem. So what we had to do, and this gets back to something that, that Dr. Venus was talking about, um, the importance of establishing structure and really, really making sure that um, there were clear expectations, uh, but also clear plans so that, that he knew what to expect and what was coming uh, became, became really, really important. Uh, Dr. Scott mentioned, yes, this uh, pandemic posed a lot of challenges to our kids. However, it also, we call it two sides of the coins, got some resilience if the kids found them mm -hmm. all through the way, like what we said, oh, like a concept like post-traumatic growth throughout difficult time, how we, we, we coach the kids to find a silver lining in the dark cloud. Maybe they can get this through mm -hmm. with the resilience. They could be find a completely different way in their lives. In times of difficult times, I really want to bring this message to all of the world, parents and the kids, wherever you are going through, we just hold on on the hopes and the faith and we will be able to get it through. That's a great segue, Venus, into my next question for you. I recognize you've done a lot of work around mindfulness, particularly for children. Uh, if you could explain what is mindfulness and what are some of the simple techniques uh, children can pick up or what can parents strive to encourage their kids to do uh, to manage these you know, terribly challenging times. We try to tell the kids about the concept of impermanence, which is a very complicated concept in mindfulness. Like the things change, things come, things change. And then we build up in like a weather forecast, like a, they will practice like, okay, come back to the breathing and then feel your emotions, just like the weather, because the weather change, emotion change, weather come, weather change. The kids learn the most concept is, it's okay to feel not okay, to be sad, to be anxious, to be angry. Things come, things go. So I just be with each moment. Uh, as a final thought and, you know, we just want to be learning from the best. I'd like to ask you both a question. What do you do to stay mentally resilient on a day-to-day -day basis that has helped carry you in this most stressful times? Venus, would you like to go first? And I'd like to end with Scott. I do a daily practice of meditation. Second, I try to keep regular exercise myself with my kid too. So those things, actually I did it with my my girls too like uh we, we do the zoom dancing together with other friends those two things are most important to help me to keep my mental health in a good shape in the pandemic time scott what about yourself but i'd also like you as you as you're giving us you know some tips to also draw some reference to the whole mass mental well-being app m haven which AIA has exclusive access to for its customers. You know, uh, so some tips from you and a little bit on M Haven. First off, I, I, I want to echo a theme that, that Dr. Venus mentioned, which is related to how I've thought about my own management of the, of the crisis. I think that one of the things that it's critically important for parents to keep in mind is that this is not, this is not a normal time. And to, to, to bear the burden of having to monitor and be a teacher and be a parent and be an employee and a friend, like, it's stressful for us too. And to give yourself some permission to feel anxious or stressed out or, or a little down in the dumps, I think is so, so important. And, and just to, to give ourselves a little bit of that space um, rather than trying to, to, to bear all of the burden. And I think that the most important thing as uh, as parents to be in good a good position to take care of our kids is to be in a good position to take care of ourselves first and whether it's exercise or meditation or cooking or uh, or reading or something like that take a little bit of time for yourself I mean one of the things as you know that we're trying to build is is a is a platform to provide both information and also if necessary some coaching via text so not not super involved this is not a clinical uh, sort of interface but just to talk to somebody that can help 
guide and structure the way that you think about being a little bit anxious or a little bit stressed out about work or about relationships or things like that. Um, those are the kinds of things. And our, our mutual goal with this platform is to be able to make this accessible to a large number of people who are experiencing this sort of pandemic related stress and, and, and even beyond that. So and, and the, I think the, the better that you can do that, whether you're you're interfacing and, and accessing tools in a digital platform or you are you know, doing the things in your day-to-day -day life to help reduce that, 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 you know, it's sort of the first step in really being able to, um, to, to get a good sense of what mental well-being is. A lot of great insights, Dr. Scott and Venus. Thank you for your valuable time and joining us for this segment on supporting mental wellness for our children during the pandemic. A big shout out to our super awesome audience for joining us on AIA Live. I hope this session has inspired informed and motivated you in some way to better appreciate the impact of mental health in these very challenging times. It is also my hope that we have left you with some valuable tips on how we can cope better as parents, friends, and friends of the youth, as well as for our kids, particularly those with special needs. Stay positive, stay safe.